For decades, quantum mechanics has amazed scientists with its strange predictions, especially when it comes to particles like photons. One bold explanation, the many worlds interpretation, claims that every possible outcome happens in its own parallel universe. But a new experiment from Hiroshima University offers a different view. Using an advanced interferometer, researchers found evidence that photons may travel multiple paths at once in a single universe, with their behavior shaped by how they're measured. If confirmed, this could reshape our understanding of quantum reality. In this video, we'll explore the experiment, what it revealed, and why it challenges the idea of a multiverse. The double-slit experiment has remained a cornerstone in demonstrating quantum mechanics departure from classical expectations. When individual photons are sent toward two open slits without observation, they generate an interference pattern typical of waves. But if a detector monitors which slit the photon passes through, this pattern disappears, and the behavior reverts to that of a classical particle. This duality underpins the concept of quantum superposition, where a particle appears to exist in multiple states simultaneously until a measurement forces it into one. This paradox led to different philosophical interpretations. One dominant model, the Copenhagen interpretation, treats the wave function as a complete description of a particle's potential states, with physical reality only settling when observed. Meanwhile, the many worlds interpretation attempts to preserve determinism by proposing that every possible outcome happens, but in its own branching universe. There's no collapse, just universal duplication for each quantum decision point. While elegant in its mathematics, MWI remains controversial due to its metaphysical baggage. It assumes a constantly splitting cosmos with no observable evidence of these alternate realities. Despite the lack of empirical distinction between interpretations, MWI has endured by offering a logically consistent, if extravagant, solution to the quantum measurement problem. In recent years, technological progress has enabled scientists to probe quantum systems more delicately. These advances now allow for experimental techniques that investigate the internal behavior of quantum particles without fully disrupting their state. Weak measurement, quantum feedback, and refined interferometry now offer ways to explore how particles behave between preparation and detection, potentially clarifying whether we need to invoke multiple universes at all. The Hiroshima experiment takes full advantage of these developments, aiming to expose the physical nature of superposition itself within a testable, single-universe framework. The Hiroshima University team implemented a two-path interferometer and introduced a mechanism to track the photon's influence across both paths without collapsing its quantum state. Vertically polarized photons were directed through an interferometer with half-wave plates in each path. These HWPs rotated the polarization slightly, but in opposite directions. This setup ensured that any measurable polarization flip would depend on how the photon's presence was distributed between the two paths. Key to the design was measuring the rate at which photons flipped to horizontal polarization after interference. If the photon traveled entirely through one path, the polarization flip probability followed a known baseline. However, if the photon was delocalized, distributed across both paths, the effects of the opposing rotations would cancel reducing or eliminating the polarization flip. This flip rate served as a proxy for quantifying the photon's spatial presence. Experimental data supported this behavior. In cases where interference was constructive, the flip rate dropped significantly, indicating near-perfect cancellation of rotations, implying that the photon had a balanced presence in both paths. Where interference was destructive, the flip rate rose well above the baseline, this suggested a phenomenon the researchers termed superlocalization, where the photon's behavior was consistent with it being more than fully present in one path and negatively present in the other. These results were quantified using a variable a2a squared, derived from the polarization flip probabilities. 
values less than 1 represented delocalization, while values greater than 1 indicated superlocalization. Remarkably, in low-probability output ports, A2A squared values reached as high as 50, an indication that the photon's polarization response exceeded what would be expected from mere localization. The data revealed not only that the photon could be delocalized, but that its behavior could vary drastically depending on the interference conditions at detection. This method avoided any direct which path measurement that would destroy the interference. Instead, it allowed the researchers to infer the photon's behavior based on subtle, non-destructive interactions. It provided an operational definition of delocalization rooted in physical outcomes, without the need for speculative interpretations or unobservable parallel realities. The Hiroshima results go beyond validating a novel experimental technique. They challenge deeply held assumptions about the role of measurement and the structure of quantum theory. One of the most striking conclusions is the context dependence of a photon's behavior. Delocalization wasn't a static feature encoded at the source. It emerged based on the phase shift and detection port. This challenges classical causality, suggesting that future measurement conditions can influence what seems to be a particle's past. This idea echoes the delayed choice quantum eraser and other experiments that question the linear flow of time in quantum systems. Here, the photon's internal state becomes defined only when measurement occurs and in a way that reflects the entire experimental setup, including its outcome. From a theoretical standpoint, this aligns with interpretations that treat quantum states as relational or informational, rather than objective properties. The experiment also provides empirical challenges to the many worlds framework. In MWI, every outcome is assumed to be equally real, occurring in a distinct universe. But Hiroshima's findings show that different outcomes, constructive versus destructive interference, result in different physical effects on a photon's internal degrees of freedom. Furthermore, the appearance of superlocalization raises questions about the limits of classical thinking. It suggests that negative probability densities, long considered mathematical oddities, may have physical meaning under weak measurement conditions. These behaviors were once thought to only exist in theoretical constructs, but now they have been tied to observable phenomena in the lab. The implications reach into quantum technology. If quantum states can be manipulated through such subtle, context-dependent interactions, future quantum devices could exploit this sensitivity to optimize control over qubits, perform error correction, or build more robust entangled states. Understanding the true mechanics of delocalization could allow engineers to harness quantum coherence more efficiently without resorting to brute force measurements. Ultimately, this experiment pushes the interpretation of quantum mechanics away from metaphysical speculation and closer to empirical, testable science. It suggests that quantum reality is not fragmented across infinite branches, but rather woven into a single, intricately connected whole where the meaning of where and when is defined not by classical logic, but by quantum context. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this exploration of quantum reality, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe for more science. Explained simply. See you in the next video.